Uh, on the phone now is a, uh, a guy who's been on the show before. We love him. One of the biggest names in baseball, as far as I'm concerned, and one of the most confusing, <laughs> especially for our announcer, Mike Boschetti, who seems to be illiterate on some levels. The great Mark Gubiza. What's up, Mark? Hey, Artie, what's going on? I, I don't know if I could follow Gilbert after that, man. That, that <laughs> voice he has is just too difficult to be able to follow up with. You're right. Well, uh, listen, the good thing is you're not a comedian. I'm sure you'll be fine. But as a comic, I've had to follow him in, uh, in comedy clubs and at roasts. And it's just, yeah, like that, that, whether you laugh at that voice or not, most people laugh at it. But if you, you don't get it, that voice alone, you're right, just draws the energy out of the room. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, believe me, uh, he's not going to be able to tell us anything about uh, the Yankees' middle relief pitching, so don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, speaking of the Yanks, A-Rod arrives in Tampa, Mr. Big Shot. <laughs> I mean, can, can you as a baseball insider, Mark, explain to me as a Yankee fan uh, what, what you think is a logical uh, scenario for the Yankees and A-Rod and their future together? Artie, that's a tough one because, you know, they're playing extremely well right now. As they are. A team. And, I, and I think when you look at the way certain teams have played over the last few years, look at the San Francisco Giants. There's no reason for them to win two World Series in the last three years, but they play as a team. They do, yeah. And yep. sometimes that's what you need. You need guys that are going to go out there and, you know, make it make it out to advance a runner and or do whatever it takes to win a game. And then when A-Rod comes back into the equation, then everything changes because then all of a sudden you have that superstar coming back and it's going to be a, a lightning rod for the rest of the team and the distractions come about. But, I mean, I, I loved him as a player for a lot of years. I know right now that this situation is not going well for him. So I, I don't foresee him wearing the pinstripes too much longer, but the reality is he'll be back at some point this year, hopefully healthy enough to be able to help the Yanks win some games at least. Do you see him wearing any uniform too much longer? Do you think he's going to bow out to the major leagues and with some dignity maybe? I, I, you know what, I think if, if he can't, I mean, there's no better uniform to be, to be quite honest with you. Even though I, I played a majority of my career in Kansas City and we were born and, and bred to dislike the Yankees because of all the situations <laughs> over the years with the Royals and the Yankees, yep. that if you get a chance to wear that uniform, there's no better uniform to wear. And if things aren't going well and, and you feel that your career is, is closing, why not end in that uniform and not play anywhere else, which I think it might be the case with them. It's a good point. You know, uh, yeah, and you, real quick, you bring up, uh, just to reiterate on that point you just made, people talk about rivalries all the time. Not enough people talk about the Yankees and Royals of the late 70s into the early 80s. Those playoff series were amazing. Just, just fun baseball to watch, and uh, I'm sure that resonates now. But I, I think you're right. I think if you want to go out, you want to go out a Yankee, and uh, his days are numbered. It's a sad ending. I mean, I like to goof on him, and I'm not a fan, but it's a sad ending, and an ending that's indicative of the, the times we live in, what he went through, which roids and everything else, and the arrogance and the contract and the money, blah, 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 you know. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, for a while we were talking about him breaking Hank Aaron's all-time record for home runs, and, and you could make an argument you know, that he was probably the best player we've ever seen. Right. But the reality is you're never going to feel that way anymore just because of all the other things he's gone through and, and has said, which, I mean, if you go out and play and, and you did what you did, some people can overlook it, but when you when you say things, that's when people remember all those things. That's the thing that's going to set them back. Definitely. Mark, you obviously work as the television analyst for the Angels. They were one of the hot teams in the offseason. You go out and get Josh Hamilton, Pujols the year before. Yet You look up, they're 11 and 20, eight and a half back. Uh, I guess, A, what's going on, and B, is it about time to push the panic bu button for that well, team? Well, there's, there's no question. I think the panic button has been pushed. I mean, when you think about coming into the season, there was a couple teams that everyone was talking about. There was the Toronto Blue Jays, there was the Angels, of course the Dodgers, teams that everyone anticipated being the best. Even the Washington Nationals, for that, that matter right now, they're not playing as good as everyone anticipated. But the reality is you have to play on the baseball field. I think they were uh, overlooking the fact that they were a little bit thin as far as the starting rotation. They anticipated their bullpen being much, much better than, than last year, but in reality, it's, it's been a difficult thing for them. They've gone through so many pitches. I think at this point, they've gone th through at one point or another this year, and we're only in the beginning part of May, every single pitcher on the 40-man roster, which is very, very difficult to do, it's been that issue. I mean, they're just not pitching well enough, either their starters and or their bullpen, and, and you know, Josh Hamilton has struggled. Uh, Albert Pujols has been dealing with some injuries, and he hasn't put up the numbers. Mike Trout is still one of the best players in the game, even though he's so young, but he's kind of, you know, hasn't put up the numbers everyone had hoped for. So there's a lot of things that have gone wrong 
yes, there's plenty of time to, to turn it around. But at, at this point, the way Texas continues to play, you can't afford to knock them down. We're down here in Houston right now. You have to go out minimum two out of three, if not all three games, and start something going at some point. Yeah, you know, it's hard for me to tell. You know, obviously this is a, a, a generation that wants things done immediately. You want to be great quick. You got no attention span. To push a panic button on May 7th. <laughs> is a little odd, but yeah, you're right. I mean, I think Trout, it's way too early to, to judge Trout on a year yet. I mean, uh, but uh, I, I, I see I see your point. Well, what about the Blue Jays? You think the Blue Jays are the real deal? Uh, coming into season, everyone was picking them up, because I was out for uh, in Vegas during the Super Bowl, and I always check to see the odds and just kind of gauge on, on, on what do you think about certain teams, and, and everybody throughout Las Vegas was thinking that, that the Blue Jays were the favorites. To right. win the World Series, and they, you know, they, anytime you bring all those big names into a team, right at, at one point, you have to wait for the team to gel. But you know, I look what's going on up there. Uh, I can't see them recovering. I mean, the, the, the Boston Red Sox have played very well, which is a big time surprise for me. The, the Yankees, even with all these injuries, have played exceptional baseball. And Baltimore, which I thought would fall back, and just watching them in the series, they won three out of four against the Angels in Anaheim. I think they're a pretty legit team. Their bullpen is, is, is exceptionally good. You know, the Machado at third base, I think, is one of the best players that nobody really talks a whole lot about. But Manny Machado, the way he can hit the ball and field the ball at third base, he's a, he's a great young player. Yeah, the I agree. The not going to go away either. Yeah, no, Baltimore. I, I agree with you about Machado. I mean, he's one of those young guys. It's fun to watch, and he's got a lot to play for. He's still in that that hunger stage, definitely. Yeah. Mark, you talked about playing most of your career in Kansas City. As a lifelong Royals fan and grew up in Kansas like me, literally since you left, they've had one, maybe two decent seasons. But here we are now, blue one late today, but 17-11, and 11, a game back in the Central. The youth movement in Kansas City – They've had about 10 of them. But is this finally the one? Is Kansas City finally a competitor? Mm. Yeah, you know, there's no doubt. They've, all, they've drafted well of, of recent time. Before they used to draft the first-round pick and, and signability was the phrase they would use for the guy they drafted. But over the last couple of seasons from Moustakis on forward, they've drafted the best player they can get. And I think that's really helped them out. And getting James Shields and, and Wade Davis and, and Urban Santana from the Angels, they finally – have some arms starting. They can give them some depth in the, in the rotation. Their bullpen is great. They got a lot of good arms down there, but they were overused and taxed last season. I think they're they're not going to go away. I mean, they have some, they have a fun bunch of guys that play hard, a lot of young talent. So you you worry about that as a, as the season progresses. Do they fall back on any veteran on that team? I don't know if they have enough veterans to help them out through the tough times, but I think they're they're not going to go away. Uh, the Tigers are the clear favorite in that division. They're finally playing well. They got great starting pitching, but their bullpen's a little bit sketchy, too. So I, it's going to be a fun race. I don't think you can look at any team or any, you know, either leg that has a dominant team. So that's why I think it's going to be almost like what we've seen in the NFL over the last few years where it's whoever gets hot at the right point is going to be in that World Series and going to win it. I don't mind that. I don't mind stuff like that as long as, the, as long as there's not pathetic baseball being played, which is the case in, in some areas. You know, I want to get off the, the beaten track a little bit with this, and I, I don't know if this is something you ever think about, but it's something I started to think about. And, you, uh, you know, I was thinking about the Mets recently. You, you rarely see uh, in, like, Sports Illustrated or, or even local uh, papers and stuff, people list the worst managed teams in baseball. When I say managed, I mean how they manage the money that's available to them, like from ownership to GM, the front office, scouts, all the way down. Like, if you had to make a list off the top of your head of, like, five major league teams who just don't do anything with the resources they have, uh, as compared to an Oakland or a Kansas City who can do a lot with nothing, um, to me... The top of the list are the New York Mets. Like, with the money they have available, they're just a horribly managed organization from the front office uh, to the owners on down. I mean, would you agree with that? And can you name any other teams you think are like that in this day and age in baseball? Well, I have to agree with you on the Mets when you consider how great that ballpark is. That new City Field is a fantastic yard. And it's New York, you know? Yeah, I mean, and you get a chance. Exactly. You get a chance to play in New York. I mean, it's like... If you were a hockey player, it would be like playing for the Montreal Canadiens. Right. It's, it's what you want to do. You want to play in New York. Obviously, your first choice would be the Yankees. Right behind there is the Mets. So I mean, you get a chance to play in New York. And so many players, and I've talked to when I, when I was playing on through to players now, 
anybody would jump at an opportunity to play for the New York Mets under most circumstances. But under these circumstances right now, no. There's other places you'd much rather play. And, you know, you look at the Chicago Cubs. I think with Theo Epstein, I think he'll turn it around with their new ownership. But although they're – you know, there's some some reports about they're having issues with Wrigley Field and and a video board they want to put out there. So there's some things you deal with there, but they haven't won in so long. So you think, you figure, why is that the case? I mean, you've always been getting high draft picks, yet you're always consistently on the bottom end of, of the, your division. So you got to throw them in there. I mean, and, and even the Astros who we're playing here now, although new ownership, I think will turn around. They're going to have some resources at some point to spend some money. I think they're drafting well. I think that's going to turn around. They trade away a lot of hefty salaries to get younger and get some, some younger players to, to replenish their farm system. But that's still one of the clubs that just a few years ago when they had the killer bees here, mm. they were as good as any franchise in baseball. But right now they're on pace to lose about 120 games this year. Yeah. A lot of people would say when you talk about bad management, too, it's surprising to some people, but they'd say the Yankees because with what they have available to them, they should win every other year <laughs> or well, four years around. They've invested so many, so many long-term contracts in these guys. At some point, you have to step back and say, okay, uh, we got we to gotta, you know, let these guys play out their deals, and then we got to try to get younger. Because for me, the, the key player, and, and, and I, I don't care what anybody tells me, I still think he's the best player in the game regardless of stats. Derek Jeter, what he's done, he right. absorbs all the good and the bad with the Yankees. And since he's been aboard, they've won a number of world championships because of his ability not only to rise at the right occasion, but also to absorb all the negativity, which is it's certainly enough of that around with the Yankees. Definitely. Hey, Mark, obviously with Houston moving into uh, the American League West, you've got even divisions in baseball now. Um, you've got a situation where there's an extra wild card team in the American League and National League as well. Is baseball like where it should be right now, or is there anything that's been changed recently that you don't like or that still needs to be changed? Or are we in a, a really good spot with Major League Baseball right now? Well, I, I think because, like we just talked about, I think the parity in the game, there's no team that all of a sudden you're going to say automatically is going to win the World Series like we saw the Yankees for a number of years in the late 90s and early 2000s. That was a lock that the Yankees were going to win it. They'll still be competitive no matter what. The one thing, it's, it, for me, I still have a little issue here and there. Is the fact is, one, because you mentioned that the Astros are in that AL West, there's 15 teams in each league, so you have interleague play throughout the entire season. I think either you, you, you have to come up with a decision, either you either have DHs in both leagues or you don't have a DH in either league, because I think the National League has advantages in interleague play when you have it all year. We opened up the Angels in, in Cincinnati where the pitcher had a hit right away for three games. It's, just, it's, it's not fair. It's not an even playing field, I don't think, when you go to a National League field. So if you get rid of the DH or make the National League have the DH, I think it's going to make the game that much better. Besides, you'd rather see David Ortiz hit than, than a pitcher hit anyhow mm -hmm. as, as a baseball Sure. Fan. I think it's, they may indeed some point do that. So you think, I mean, this is probably an obvious thing, but uh, before the American League goes to pitchers hitting, the National League's going to get the DH, right? Yeah, I would, I would think that would be the case. Just because yeah. of, you know, when you, when you see pitchers, you know, whatever, they're up there, they're going to make it out, they're up there to try to bunt, they can get hurt, especially when you have American League pitchers going there, there's National League clubs, weird stuff happens. I think for, from a pure fan standpoint, we're all about run scored. You see that in all sports. That I, I think it comes down to you have the DH in the National League. Although the traditionists will always fight that, but the reality is they fought the wild card. And I think without the wild card, baseball won't be anywhere near where it is right now. Is it too early to ask you? We'll end with this uh, for a prediction. Uh, who's going to be in the series? Oh, you know what? <laughs> Already a guy. You know, I I, I, I would think I, I just can't discount the Giants. Just because they they play well. well you know, what, Mark. Let me put it, Mark. Let me put it to you this way: both me and you were me and you were in Vegas. We got an eight ball in our pocket and uh, a jack and water in our hand and a couple of hot broads serving us more drinks. And we got ten grand to do whatever we want with on one futures bet in baseball. All right. And we got to pick who's going to either get in the series or win it. What do we do with those ten Gs? Uh, you know what? I'm I'm going uh, I'm going to go away from the Giants. I'm going to go with the Atlanta Braves. Versus the Detroit Tigers. Wow! And, and I think and I think the Tigers finally find a way. I think Torrey Hunter is the X factor for him. I love the guy. I think he's he, he brings so much to a team. And he, I mean, we could talk about the fact he's hitting real well, but he brings that X factor to a team. He, he can catch a ball, which I don't think Detroit did real well last year because they don't have a lot of range. 
but he, he can will a team to win those few extra games. So I, I think the Tigers and the Braves in the World Series would not surprise me at all. Okay, well, of course, the correct answer, while that was a good answer, the correct answer was to drink the drinks, bang the chicks, sell the coke, and put 20 grand on the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this is a game my wife's listening in right now. I feel like I'm going to the Tigers oh, versus Atlanta. Forget about the girls. We'll just sell the coke and drink the drinks. <laughs> there you go. That's much better. I, I'll be better at home then. Mark, uh, you're a good man. Please come back and join us. Thanks for uh, your uh, insight, and we'll talk to you soon, hopefully, buddy. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. I think I might come in and visit you guys when we come to New York. You, you got to, man. You got to check this place out. We gotta, it's, it's wonderful in there. That sounds good. I'll yeah. see you guys in August. All right. The great Mark Kubas. <laughs>